Hello students, welcome to Unacademy, India's largest learning platform. I am Abhishek Datta. I did my graduation from IIT Roorkee and my MBA from IIM Indore. So in the previous video, we had learnt in detail about the Bohr's model. In this video, we will start off with the quantum model and specifically the developments which led on to the development of the quantum model. So with this, let's begin our learning session. Hello students, welcome to an academy once again. This learning session is about the developments which led to the quantum model. So we had done up till the Bohr's model till now and we saw it had a few drawbacks, right? So there was definitely a need of a new model and that new model was developed. It was named the quantum model. But before it could be developed, there are two major developments, two major scientific developments which we need to study for us to understand what is the quantum model, right? So this video is about those couple of developments. I'm Abhishek Datta. You already know about me. So let's begin this. I'll introduce you to the chapter first of all. Then we'll see the first development, which is the dual behavior of matter. And secondly, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So let us quickly with our first topic. Why is this two developments necessary in our syllabus? So definitely we need a new atomic model because of the drawbacks of the Bohr's model, right guys? So in view of the shortcomings of the Bohr's model, attempts were made to develop a more suitable and more general model for atoms, not just for hydrogen. Bohr's model was applicable only for hydrogen and hydrogen like atoms, right? So two major developments which contributed significantly in the formulation of such a model were these two, right? First is the dual nature of matter. Now we had seen the dual nature of electromagnetic waves, but this is matter. So this is different, right? Waves are different from matter. Even matter show dual properties. Then secondly, we learn about the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So let us look at what is the dual nature of matter. This was given by D. Broglie, who was a French scientist. In 1924, he proposed that matter and matter is different from waves. So be careful guys, matter just like waves or radiation, they should also exhibit dual properties. That is both the particle as well as the wave like properties. This means that this means that just as the photon photon is the particle of a light, right? So it's an electromagnetic wave because light is also an electromagnetic wave. So electromagnetic waves have momentum as well as wavelength. Similarly, electrons should also have momentum as well as wavelength electrons by electrons, I mean matter over here, right? So matter should also have some momentum as well as wavelength. And D. Broglie was the pioneer in formulating a mathematical equation which combines all this, right? So D. Broglie from this analogy gave the following relation between the wavelength lambda, the momentum, which is P of a material, right? So material is important over here. It's not a wave. Keep in mind that it's a material. So lambda, which is the wavelength of any material, any object which is moving with velocity v and has a mass of m. So what is the momentum of such a object guys? It is nothing but m into v, right? So I've written p instead of m into v, p is the momentum over here. And h, as you already know, is the Planck's constant. It's a universal constant. So he said the lambda of any object, any moving object can be found out using this ratio. You just need to take up a uh, Planck's constant, which is the universal constant and divide it by the momentum of that object, the mass into velocity. And you will arrive at the wavelength at which that matter is propagating. Right guys, here the mass is denoted by the letter M. V denotes velocity of the particle and P is the momentum, as I said. So this is again an important relationship. Guys, you need to remember this. This will definitely be asked in the examination. This is an important topic. So dual nature of matter. This is how de Broglie gave us the uh, relationship right guys so de broglie's prediction was confirmed experimentally this was a theoretical explanation right so this was to be confirmed experimentally how did sci other scientists do it so it was found that electron beams now electron is matter over here so whenever electron beam undergoes diffraction which is a phenomena of the characteristic of waves so a electron which is made up of particles right matter it's simple matter negatively charged matter so electrons which is matter it shows wave like properties because it shows the properties of diffraction now diffraction is a concept you'll study that later in videos 
and diffraction is only undergone by waves particles do not show diffraction but scientists for the first time saw that particles also show diffraction hence they concluded that particles for example electron in this case because they show diffraction they should have the properties of waves hence electron being a particle it also shows the properties of a wave this fact has been put to use in making an electron microscope so this is the very same uh, fact which has been used in the working of an electron microscope the wave properties of an electron right it needs to be noted that according to de broglie according to this equation over here every object in motion has a wave character as i said even you and me every object which has momentum has some uh, lambda associated with it right has some frequency right so the wavelengths associated with ordinary objects by ordinary objects i mean sizable objects for example a ball for example a human being a truck a car these ordinary objects are so short the wavelengths are so short because of the large masses so if you see the momentum of such uh, large objects for example let's say a truck the mass is so high and the velocity is so low that this lambda is very little over here so the wavelengths associated with ordinary objects are so short that their wave properties cannot be detected so you and me we do have the wave properties but it is very very little so, such that it cannot be detected negligible you can say so this is because of the large masses the wavelengths associated with electrons now we are talking about not ordinary objects but small objects very little objects electrons as you may remember has a very little negligible mass but it does have some positive mass so electrons and other subatomic particles for example photons and neutrons they will have very small mass very little mass and can however be detected and uh, can it can be detected experimentally let's take up an example to understand this for example if you take a ball with 0.1 kg 100 grams weight which is the general weight of any cricket ball so if that is moving at a velocity of 10 to the power 10 into uh, 10 meter per second sorry guys so you are taking a cricket ball and it's moving at the velocity of 10 meter per second which is a very general velocity while playing cricket okay so what will the lambda be the lambda will be 6.6 into 10 to the power minus 34 how did i get this i just substituted this in this equation and i found this is the lambda and this is a very very small figure 10 to the power minus 34 is as good as negligible whereas in the case of an electron with a mass of 9.1 10 to the power minus 31 which is very very small in comparison to 0.1 kgs and velocity the velocity of uh, electrons at this high around 800 meter per second right so this will have a lambda of around 900 nanometer which is a sizable uh, wavelength uh, unlike the wavelength of the ball over here which is very little this is a sizable wavelength hence only small electrons with high velocity they will show some lambda and this wave life character of matter will be visible only in the case of these sort of electrons okay so let's move on guys we are done with the dual character of matter let's move on to the second topic which is the heisenberg uncertainty principle this is again a very important aspect of very uh, major scientific breakthrough so let us understand what is the heisenberg uncertainty principle so mr heisenberg over here in 1927 he stated that the uncertainty principle which is the consequence of the dual behavior of matter and radiation so we know both matter and radiation they have dual characteristics characteristics right guys the uh, they show both particle and wave life properties so heisenberg uncertainty principle it states that it is impossible to determine simultaneously the position as well as the exact momentum by momentum i mean the velocity of an electron so if we want to find out both the position where the electron is located and what is the exact momentum because we know the mass of the electron we should just need the velocity of the electron to find out the momentum so by momentum i mean the velocity it is one and the same over here so if we want to find out the position and the velocity of an electron at the same time simultaneously right we need both of those answers in a single moment of time that is impossible to do so this job is an impossible task to do this is what mr heisenberg over here claimed and he also gave us a mathematical equation which relates the position and the momentum and what is the uncertainty so mathematically he said that this is the delta x what is delta x guys this is the error in the position right so if you want to measure say suppose a distance say suppose 10 meters there will be some error measuring error 
which is denoted by delta x say suppose plus minus 1 millimeter that will be the error in your case but in the case of electrons let us denote by delta x we do not know what will be the delta x similarly the error in momentum measurement let us denote by delta p and mr heisenberg said that if you multiply these two errors this error has to be greater than h upon 4 pi note that this is a constant h is a constant and pi is a constant hence he said that the uh, product of these two errors has to be minimum of this value we cannot be so precise as to be lesser than this constant over here he said you need to at least make this sort of error right guys so here delta x the uncertainty in position and delta p is the m into delta v which is the uncertainty in momentum thus if we carry out some physical measurements on the electron's position or velocity the outcome will always depict a fuzzy picture right guys we cannot find out the position as well as the velocity and hence we'll always get a fuzzy picture we'll get minimum of this error according to heisenberg so let's move on guys what is the significance of this heisenberg uncertainty principle so the first uh, impact of this uncertainty principle is that the trajectory of an object so if you want to find the trajectory of an object what are the things we need guys it, it, it is determined by its location as well as the velocity at various moments if you have the location and the velocity of an object you can find out the future trajectory this is what we learnt in physics since for a subatomic particle such as electron it is not possible simultaneously to determine the position and the velocity at any given instant guys to an arbitrary degree of precision so we cannot be very certain about both the position as well as the electro, uh, velocity so it is not possible to talk of the trajectory of an electron it is a very fuzzy picture as we, as we said so this is the first impact the heisenberg uncertainty principle rules out the existence of a definite path or trajectory we are uh, oblivious to the definite path or the trajectory guys we do not know what is the definite path or the trajectory of an electron because of the heisenberg uncertainty principle the effect of the principle is significant only for motion of microscopic objects guys like electron and not uh, a cricket ball for example and is negligible for that of macroscopic objects like a cricket ball as we saw it is it therefore means that the precise statements of position and momentum we cannot be very precise guys that with 100 percent surety we cannot say this is the position and this is the momentum any one of them can be measured with precision with 100 percent degree of uh, precision okay so uh, the precision over here have to be replaced by the statements of probability we can be only up till a certain percent sure say suppose we are 80 percent sure that the electron is lying at this distance or we are 70 percent sure that the momentum of the electron is this much so we have to write a probability now this 100 uh, percent surety has to be replaced with a probability right that the electron has a given position and momentum this is what happens in the quantum mechanical model of an atom so these are the couple of developments right guys and with this we reach at the end of the video let us summarize firstly we learned about the d broglie equation what did mr d broglie say he said that the uh, matter like similar to the waves over here they also possess dual characteristics and this is how you find out the lambda of any moving object we divide the h which is a constant by the momentum of that moving object right guys and mr heisenberg he gave us the second property he said according to this principle it is impossible to determine simultaneously the exact position as well as the momentum or the velocity of the electron guys and this is what he said about the minimum error which everyone will make there is no way there is no machine no way a human can measure both the uh, position as well as the momentum with less than this uncertainty right guys so this is the minimum uncertainty while measuring the position and momentum of an electron thus if we carry out some physical measurements we'll get a fuzzy or a blur picture we cannot be very certain about both the properties of an electron we cannot measure what is the trajectory right so there is no existence of a definite path or trajectory we cannot measure that trajectory guys we can measure only the probability distribution of that electron guys so this uh, certainty has to be replaced with the probability percentage we can be only 80 percent sure that the electron is lying somewhere Okay, so this was the summary guys and thank you for listening to me in this video. In the next session we will be taking up the actual quantum model and we will use both of these properties and derive what is the quantum, uh, quantum model of an atom. As always, if you enjoy watching my videos guys, you can always follow me over here and ask me any questions if you have in the comment section. Thank you guys, take care, bye bye.